What's up everybody and welcome to another RuneScape 3 Iron Man guide. Today's guide will be a little bit different from normal as we are going to take a look at preparing for RuneScape's newest skill, Necromancy, on an Iron Man. This guide is made using information gathered from official Jagex sources, content creators got to preview the skill, and some information I know from leaks and general game knowledge I used at Theorycraft. First, let's go over items you will need for Necromancy. A lot of this stuff you can find out for yourself by reading the news post on the RuneScape website. Bones. Everybody and their grandmother has been hoarding bones since Necromancy was announced. All the numbers I'm giving for these bone amounts are approximate and subject to change as the skill balancing is being further refined. You're going to need about 10,000 low tier bones, the easiest one being big bones, since you should have a good amount from Seren Spirits. 6,000 mid tier bones. Dragon bones are the obvious choice for this as Vendicta is very generous with his dragon bone drops. Any mid game iron should have plenty of these bones already. 5,000 high tier bones. These might be a bit tougher if you're still in the mid game. Dinosaur bones are going to be the easiest since Raksha and Big Game Hunter give out a decent amount. If you've grinded Elite Dungeon 3 already, then you can even use Reinforced Dragon Bones. Necromancy is going to introduce four new runes that are required to cast incantations, basically necromancy spells, which means you'll need a good chunk of pure essence. I'd say around 75,000 to 100,000. We aren't sure yet how fast you'll burn through these runes, but we do know that Grasping Pouches won't work on release. It has been confirmed by Jagex that all runecrafting related boosts will work for these new runes, including the semi-new Anima Stones. There are plenty of ways to get pure essence, and one of the fastest is killing Abbey Demons with a scythe and a cannon. Next up is Spider Silk Armor and Mystic Armor. This you can easily buy in and around Varrock. Spider Silk is at the Varrock Magic Staff Shop in the city square. The Champion's Guild near the Lodestone sells full Mystic except for the body. You'll need to go to Oziek near the edge of the Lodestone to snag a Mystic Body, assuming you have completed Dragon Slayer at some point in the past 15 years. While we are still on the topic of armor, you are going to need Subjugation Helmet, Body, and Legs. It's safe to assume this will be used to upgrade your armor to Tier 70 Augmentable Power Armor. I've already made a guide to killing Krill Susaroth, so I'll leave a link to that in the description. Algarum Thread is going to be used for something, most likely armor but thankfully you can easily snag some near the Oglog Lodestone for 500,000 a pop, so maybe don't buy these right away if you are still in the early game. Jagex has confirmed that bars will be used for necromancy, so gathering 100 or so bars from Bronze to Bane would be a good idea. I doubt we will need a lot of these bars. Alright, those were all the items that are required for necromancy. Now let's move on to items that aren't necessarily required for the skill but might be useful to have. First up, the Spectral Spirit Shield and the Draconic Visage. Jagex has not said what these are specifically going to be used for, but I heard these are basically becoming necromancy type shields. Spectral is currently a magic shield, but will become a necromancy one on release. Draconic Visage will be the same. Currently there is a Dragon Fire Shield variant for all three styles and Necro will get its own. Remember, this info isn't confirmed by Jagex and purely leaks I've heard, so I wouldn't stress out too much about getting these items before release especially the Spectral as it's very easy to go dry on. Currently no necromancy focused jewelry has been announced, so make sure you have a Reaver's Ring or Ring of Death handy. Necromancy cannot splash and at least at the preview event your summoned spirits can crit, so Reaver's is most likely going to be very powerful at least once you get to the tier 90 main hand, as they still have a decent hit chance. For those who don't know, necromancy damage potential is calculated off of hit chance, so even though you can't splash, if your hit chance is in the toilet, then your max hit will be very low. Because of this, I recommend using a Reaper Necklace instead of an Amulet of Souls. Speaking of hit chance, I highly recommend grinding out Revenants for a Stadius Warhammer, then unlocking the Ingenuity of the Human's Ability Codex. Because Necromancy damage is hit chance based, using a Stadius Warhammer special attack will be a massive upgrade basically everywhere, even at places you have 100% hit chance at already. The ingenuity of the human's ability makes your next attack be a guaranteed hit, so you can apply the Stadius Warhammer debuff without needing a full melee gear swap or leaving it up to chance. If you don't or aren't able to get a hammer before release, it's still worth getting ingenuity of the humans, so you can use it on things like smoke cloud for better crits, or even just for a Guthic Staff special attack to help with your hit chance. If you are an early game iron who happened to get a full Bandos book, I recommend using it if you don't have anything better because the special effect of this book increases your hit chance for 15 seconds. Cinderbane gloves are going to be fantastic, or at least they were during the preview event, since all your summoned spirits could proc Cinderbane damage. Plus, you should be able to use them even at one necromancy, so that will be a nice DPS boost for those wanting to train the skill faster. I'm guessing the two necromancy exclusive bosses, 
that are launching with the skill will be poisonable since the zombie spirit summon is poison based. A wind book will be very useful for power leveling necromancy as the skill seems to lack AoE attacks. A Praesal Codex has been confirmed by Jagex to be needed to unlock the tier 99 necromancy underhead. So if you've gotten the AOD title I hope you kept a spare codex, otherwise you gotta go back to everybody's favorite group boss. The last item on our list is a spare essence of finality. The necromancy main hand is confirmed to have a special attack, although we don't know what the special attack is or what tier the special attack is on. Regardless it can't hurt to have another EOF. That should be it for items, now we can talk about general supplies and account unlocks. Necromancy is a combat skill, so obviously overloads, Vuln Bombs, and Adren Pots are going to be needed. I highly recommend converting all your herb supplies into whatever is your highest tier overload before Necromancy launches. All overloads made before launch will include a Necromancy boost. Once the skill launches, you'll have to make Necromancy potions, supers, and extremes in order to make overloads. Jagex has confirmed Necromancy will launch with no aura and has no current plans for a Necromancy aura, but that doesn't mean there isn't a few key auras we can take advantage of. The Supreme Invigorate Aura refunds 10% of Adrenaline on all ultimates, and this does in fact stack with Ring of Vigor and Conservation of Energy Relic. For those who don't know, your summon spirits count as ultimate abilities. This will most likely be one of, if not the best auras for Necromancy, assuming nothing changes about the way spirit summons work. Vampirism Aura will be very powerful if the Poison build isn't nerfed, but even if Poison is nerfed it might still find some use in helping you stay alive, as extending the duration of your Spirit Summons takes a lot of your HP. The Inspiration Aura has the potential to be extremely powerful with Necromancy if the attacks from your Spirit Summons proc this effect. Every attack you do gives you 0.5% Adrenaline. Imagine how much Adrenaline you'll be getting fed for free if you have all your Summon Spirits up at once. I don't think any of the content creators tested this out at the preview event, so I guess we'll have to wait and see. And last but not least is the Old Faithful Maserat Aura, a nice 5% flat DPS boost with no downsides. I also recommend stocking up on a good chunk of Chronos to change your relics around. We already know Conservation of Energy and Fury of the Small will be very powerful with Necromancy. Necromancy also has a runecrafting component, so the Pouch Protector relics could be useful. Death Ward might also prove to be powerful, as we discussed before, maintaining high hit points seems to be pretty tough with Necromancy. If we are constantly at low hit points, and obviously Berserker's Fury will be a great perk, especially if the bonus damage applies to our summon spirits. Necromancy gear at level 70 and higher will of course be augmentable, so make sure to get a nice supply of Divine Energy, Augmenters, and Gizmos so you won't have to waste much time dealing with that on launch. Here are a few perk Gizmos that you might want to plan on making for Necromancy. For weapons, Precise 6 Ruthless 1 for the main hand. Aftershock 4, Equilibrium 2 for the offhand. For armors, Impatient 4, Devoted 4. Invigorating 4th Mobile or Slayer perk. Biting 4 Mobile or Slayer perk, depending on what you picked for Invigorating 4. And Crackling 4, Relentless 5 for the final perk. Lucky 6, Absorbative 1 might be a switch perk if Lucky can proc on the life transfer ability. Okay, we've gone over item unlocks and supplies you want to prep before Necromancy releases, but what about when the skill is actually out? How are we going to train Necromancy? Well, it's a combat skill, so getting combat XP might be a bit difficult since Elite Dungeon 3 has rotted our brains. Elite Dungeon 3 trash runs are confirmed to be nerfed by the time Necro releases, so that option won't be available to us. Well, it can be, but don't expect to get 1.5 million XP per hour anymore. Combat XP earned with Necromancy will be scaled, so the XP numbers I say in this video won't be the XP you're getting when you kill them. So, I've compiled a list of monsters for early, mid, and late game that should be pretty decent to train on as you progress through the Necromancy skill. And because my videos don't get a lot of views, hopefully these spots won't be too crowded. I left out extremely popular and well-known training methods like Abyss Creatures or Greater Demons in the Wilderness. Since they are already well known, it will be absolutely packed on launch. Please note, it is currently unknown if the Scrimshaw of Sacrifice will work on Necromancy. At launch, I assume they won't be, but still, something to keep in mind. For low-level monsters, we have Cockroach Soldiers and the Stronghold of Player Safety. These pre-EOC free-to-play classics have 1300 HP and get 56 XP. Giant Spiders and Catabal Pawns on Floor 3 of the Stronghold of Security. Anyone who grinded out 99 combats in the 2010 scape era remember these. The Spiders have 2800 HP and give 91 XP, while Catabal Pawns have 3900 HP and give 148 XP. Ghouls near the Canifus Slayer Tower. Swampletic fans will know these freaks. 2300 HP and 138 XP. 
I have a feeling these will be packed. Jungle Spiders on Hazelmere's Island. If you played around the release of summoning, then these spiders were a great way to train mid-level combat and make some decent money. 3100 HP, 297 XP. Hellhounds in the Deep Wilderness. Killing them in the Wildy will most likely be less busy and can benefit from the Infernal Puzzle Box. 3300 HP, 361 XP. Now let's move on to mid-game monsters. Fire Giants in the Waterfall Dungeon. Fire Giants are a tried and true training spot for any old school heads. So I think it might be decent for Necromancy. 6700 HP, 404 XP. Exiled Calphites in the Calphite King Cave. All Iron Men know this spot. It's a very popular place to get magic up to 60 since you can safe spot them. If you can find an empty world, then I highly recommend this spot. 7000 HP, 661 XP. Spiritual Warriors slash Mages. There's a good chance you have these in your player owned Slayer dungeon already, so you won't have to worry about other players. These are nice as you can AFK them without using aggro pots. 7000 HP, 661 XP. Abyssal Demons in the Wilderness or the Slayer Tower. These will most likely be very packed on release, but if you can find an open spot, it's worth setting up with a cannon and some aggro pots. Plus, you'll get some pure essence you need for Necro Runes. 8500 HP, 661 XP. Gargoyles in the Wilderness. Only do these if you have the Auto Smasher perk unlocked in the Slayer Shop. 13,500 HP, 846 XP. High level training methods. Just do Slayer tasks. Once you get to the tier 80 weapon or higher weapon tier, it'll be worth it to just do Slayer, especially if you aren't 120 yet. Because Necro can't splash and exists outside the combat triangle, you can comfortably use it at most, if not all, Slayer tasks. Normal Mode 1, Arch Glacor. The XP per hour here isn't great, but this is good if you need something that is easily full AFK. We do one mechanic so you can quickly loot by pressing the space bar, then going back to whatever you were doing. 105,000 HP, 7,777 XP. The Cerberus Juvenile in Elite Dungeon 4. Normal mode, 120,000 HP, 10,000 XP. Story mode, 60,000 HP, 10,000 XP. Demon Slayer perk highly recommended. Story mode and normal mode give the same combat XP, but obviously story mode is a lot faster to kill. If you don't need Dungeoneering tokens or slivers anymore, then go for story mode. If you still need those unlocks, it might be worth doing normal mode or just going to a different training method. I think I've covered pretty much everything. If you think I've left anything out, please leave a comment down below and if I think it's good, I'll pin it or add it to the description. I'm so excited for Necromancy. I love theory crafting and working with everyone to come up with unique, weird, or crazy methods. Necromancy is without a doubt the most exciting update RuneScape has had in a very, very long time. Subscribe for more Iron Man focused content, especially Necromancy content on the road to launch. As always, please leave a suggestion on an Iron Man guide you'd like to see from me. Thanks for watching.